Clipchamp is the newest built-in video editor for Windows. So if you are using Windows 11, there is a big chance that you have it already in your PC. Just search and start using it. Otherwise, if you haven't received the update yet, or if you are still using Windows 10, you can simply open the Microsoft Store, search for Clipchamp, and then install it for free. Yes, Clipchamp is free. Even though it has all the features of a high-end video editor, and maybe even more, it is really free. Let me open Clipchamp here so we can get started. At first use, you will need to create an account or log in using your Microsoft, an email, or your Google account. Once logged in, you can start using it. Clipchamp is not really fully free in essence, since you still have an option to upgrade with a monthly subscription. The only difference is you'll have access to premium stock audio, image, videos, filters, and effects, plus the brand kits and content backup. Clipchamp is a cloud application, so everything is saved in the cloud, which means you really don't have a copy of your project from your local machine, so the content backup might be the best reason to subscribe to the essentials. But for me, personally, I would still choose the free version, I just need to make sure that I don't move any of my video project elements to a different folder, so that when I go back to my video projects, they will still work. To get started on editing and creating videos, you can click record something, or create a new video. By the way, below here, you can see all your previous video projects, and you can reopen them. But again, the elements they reference in that project should be in the same folder when you last opened that project. I'll go with create a new video here. Okay, we are now in a new video project, which is expectedly empty right now. The first thing that you'll need to do is add the media that you want to use with this project. The audio files, video files, images and stuffs. As indicated here, you can easily drag and drop those files here in the media pool. I have prepared a folder here that contains sample media files that we can use for this demo. Let's drag and drop them to the Clipcham project's media pool. There you go. We now have four media files here that we can use to our project. You can now easily drag and drop these media files to your project's timeline and start editing and creating your video. Other than the readily available elements that we dragged and dropped to the project, we can also create new video elements on the spot here. Just go to Record and Create tab. From here you can create a video by recording from your webcam or recording your screen or both. Let's try recording the screen. When you click that, this pop-up recording toolbar will show. When you click the red circle record button, a dialog box will open to let you choose if you want to record the entire screen, or just a certain window, or even just a tab on that window. You can include the audio in the recording by checking the share system audio checkbox at the bottom. Then just click the share button when you want to start recording. Here we go, we are now currently recording my screen. Let me open another window here just to have some action happening in the screen. When you're done recording, you can click the stop button from the toolbar or the stop sharing button here. You'll then have a preview on what you have recorded. You now have an option to save and edit it or re-record it. I'll choose to save here. The recorded video will then be automatically be added to your project's media elements and it will also be added to your video timeline. Let me delete the one in the timeline for now. Going back to record and create tab, we also have an option here for an audio element, which is the text-to-speech feature. This is my favorite feature in Clipchamp since it eliminates the need to record your voice for your video's voice over. You can choose a language from this huge variety of languages and accents listed here. It even has my native language of Filipino and even English with a Philippine accent. Let's try that for our example. Then you can just type in the text that you want to convert into a speech or an audio file that you can use for your video project. You can also select the type of voice that you want to generate. Let's choose a female voice here. You can also change the pitch of the voice as well as the speed. Let's scroll this to about three quarters of speed. You can click the preview here to listen to the audio first Be before cool saving. And subscribe to when you're satisfied with it, now. you can click the Save to Media button to add the audio file you generated to the list of media elements in your project. There we go. We now have the text-to-speech audio file here automatically added to our video project now. When we have all the media files you need for the project, you can simply drag and drop the files to the timeline, like this video file for example, which I'll put as the first media in the timeline. Let's follow that up with a Ribby Trivia opening credit video. That's how easy it is to lay out your video stories. When you click on a video, you will also have some options here at the right side toolbar. You can apply filters in the video. You have a lot of selections here, and you can see the preview in the center preview pane when you drag your mouse into a certain filter. A lot of selection of filters here. Just click on the filter that you want to apply. Aside from the filter, you can also set a caption for the video. The best thing here is, it is automatic. It will listen to the video sound and it will automatically generate a caption for that part of the video. 
For example, if I add the text-to-speech we created earlier here. Then when I turn on the auto captions, it will let you select the language that it will detect from the video, and you can also filter the bad words from those detected speeches. Let's turn it on. And there we go, you can see the captions being automatically generated. And they are impressively accurate. Another great thing about this is, all the auto-generated captions can be downloaded as an SRT file. For those who don't know, SRT files are subtitle files that you can use for your videos. I can't believe that this free video editor has this many cool features that you can't even get from other expensive video editor software. When you try to turn off the auto caption, it will even get inputs from the users on how they can improve the captions. I mean, Microsoft's Clipchamp team is really on the right path for this one. Next to caption, you can also adjust the audio of the components from your timeline. Just select the video or audio component, then adjust the bar between mute or 0%, up to 200% volume. This is very useful when you have layers of components in the timeline, and you want one layer to be muted, or maybe have a lower volume, and the other one to have a dominant audio. Then we have the fade in and fade out options. Fade is the effect of having slowly fading in from a black screen, or fading out into a black screen. You can then set here the time, in seconds, how long the fading in or out effect will take. Talking about effects, you can also add transitions to all connecting videos. Like on this part when we transition from one video to another. Right now it just suddenly switched to the next video, which is not very pleasant. That's where transition comes in, since it can add effects to the transition of coming from one video to another. On the left side toolbar, just click on transitions. You have a lot of effects to choose from here. But avoid the ones with the icon in it, since that means they are not free, and you need the paid subscription of Clipchamp to use them. So if you want the free ones, stay away from those that has a tiny icon in the corner. To apply a transition, you just need to drag it from the selection into the space between the two videos in your timeline. And that's it. The transition we selected is applied now. Let's see how it looks. There you go. A nice transition when shifting from one video to another. Great. I also want to show you that you can set multiple layers or tracks within your project. As you can see here, I am adding another layer for this cool animated GIF picture, which I'll place over the other video. You can then resize and reposition the component based on how you want it to look. Let's try playing it. Be cool and subscribe to Rebe Trivia channel now. There we go. You can also stretch the component from the timeline to shorten or extend its playing time. Cool there you go. We have a longer channel. cool animated GIF now. Multiple layers can be done on any of the components in the timeline, for videos, pictures, and even for audio. Let me try and add another layer of audio here. Just simply drag and drop them to a new layer below. More on the right side, we also have a collection of stock templates here. You can use any of these when starting a new project, and they have almost all of the pre-formatted projects here for YouTube and social media formats like Instagram, also for gaming, ads, and more. Just click on one of them, and you can select the specific template for what you need. We also have music and sound effects collections here. Again, some of this are paid, so make sure that you browse on the free-to-use category if you only want to use the free ones. You can click the play button for each of them to hear what it sounds like. Let me try to use this whoosh sound effect in line with the transition we added earlier. Let's position it right at the same location as the transition effect. Now when we play it. Cool. Perfect. Next are the list of stock videos. You have a huge collection to choose from here as well. We have the free to use. They also have a ready-made subscribe panel videos. These are very cool. Let's use one of them and put it in one layer of our project. Let's see what it looks like. Really nice. Very cool. We also have the stock images here, next after the stock videos. Also a huge collection which you can readily use to your project. Then we have the text. We have a lot of text styles you can choose from here. You can hover the mouse to preview the animation. Let's try one of them here. Let's put it in a new layer and position it above the stock video that we added earlier. To change the text properties, you will need to click the element from the project video preview. Then the properties will appear on the right side, where you can change the text to be displayed along with the font style. You can also resize and reposition it directly from the preview screen. Let's see what it will look like. There you go. It also has a cool built-in animation with it. Next we have the stock graphics. You'll have stickers, background, frames, overlays, shapes, annotation arrows, animated GIFs and more, which you can easily drag and drop to your project's timeline. I've already shown the transitions earlier. 
Last item here is the brand kit, which I think is only accessible if you have the paid version of Clipchamp. Next item I want to show you are the basic functions you can do with the video clips in your timeline. You can right-click on a clip to view them. You have the shortcut keys indicated here, like pressing S for splitting the clip, Ctrl D to duplicate, and others. The audio option expands to mute or unmuting and detaching the audio part from the video clip. You can also delete the clip from this right-click pop-up menu. Let's try to do a split for now. Splitting is basically creating a separation point from your video clip. So instead of having one whole clip, you now have two. This is very useful if you want to cut parts of that clip or maybe want to add a transition effect in that area. On any video clips, you can also drag the edges of that clip to shorten or extend it. Another thing you can adjust on a video or audio clip is their speed. Just select the clip, then click on the speed icon from the right, then feel free to adjust by dragging the bar or by just typing the value of the speed you want to set. Let's say, we make this clip play at 10 times faster. There we go. The clip has also been compressed to 10 times its length in the timeline, and when we play it, it is really fast that we almost don't see it play anymore. Let's move this clip beside the 10 times speed clip for continuity. Since this is the last part of the video project, let's add a fade out effect here. Another thing you can adjust to the video clip is the color. Just click the adjust color option from the right. From here you can set many aspects of the video clip's color like saturation, contrast, transparency, and more. You can also select the blend mode. I really like how Clipchamp, a free video editing tool, has this so many useful options and features. Now, for the size and ratio of your video output, you can click this box below the export button, and from here, you can select the video ratio that you want. You can have the usual landscape 16x9 ratio, or the portrait 9x16 for your social media videos, a 1x1 1 1 square video, 4x5, 2x3, or the cinematic ratio of 21x9. Just click the ratio you want to change it to. I'll stick with 16x9 for now. When you are done editing and creating your project, you can now export your video. You can choose the video quality and resolution. For free version, the highest resolution is 1080p, which is good enough. You can also choose 720p or 480p if you want to save some space. If your project is only 15 seconds or less, you can also export it as an animated GIF, which is really neat. I'll choose 1080p for this sample. We will then be redirected to the progress of the video generation, along with the preview of the video on the right side. From this page, you can also directly share or upload the video to Google Drive, YouTube, TikTok, OneDrive or Dropbox. You can also generate a video link which you can share to someone else. After the video has been created, it will automatically be downloaded to your local machine's download folder as you can see in the pop-up message here. Let's open it. Let's check for the resolution first. I ordered a 1080p video. And yes. We got a 1080p video resolution here indeed. Nice. Let's play it to check if the generated video is good. There we go. Everything is as expected. Now for the maintenance of the project you created, as I've mentioned earlier, all of these is saved automatically on the cloud, so there's no option here anywhere to save the project, as there's no need. When we close this one. Then we reopen Clipchamp, you will see that the project is automatically available here in the recent projects list, which you can easily open, and then continue editing. And since it is cloud-based, you can reopen the project from anywhere, as long as you are logged into the same account. Really nice. And that's it for this one. Now it's your turn to try and explore this free and fully featured video editing software from Microsoft. Clipchamp. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Millisuge for watching. Noba Air.